Electromagnetic interference, or EMI for short, is a term that describes any external effects that disturb electrical circuits by way of induction or radiation. And while that definition may have been a bit boring for some, rest assured that the EMP blasts from action in sci-fi films are coming later, so stay tuned, because graphics of extreme EMI generators like nuclear explosions and like maybe even some fighter jets are coming. For now, let's return to the everyday world with examples you'll be much more likely to have encountered when you and your buddy could accidentally control each other there's RC cars in a race, yeah. uh, that buzzing, uh, humming sound that you can hear from a speaker if a nearby cell phone rings, or that bizarre thing where one radio station can bleed right into another so you're essentially listening to a Mormon preacher and hardcore Punjabi rap at the same time. Now these types of interferers could generally be classified as narrowband, since the trouble stems from two intended broadcast transmissions that have essentially become entangled with each other. And while they're certainly annoying, the good news is that they are easily dealt with by switching between alternate broadcast channels. Breaker Breaker, one niner, this is Linus coming in with a big 10-4 there. Sir, this channel is for police use only. Uh. Uh, anyway, or by shielding conductive wiring that might turn into an accidental antenna. The second main type of interferers would be broadband, and these kind of suck. Things like lightning strikes and high voltage power lines are a little tougher to deal with since the EMI that they spew out is from copious amounts of energy and covers many frequencies, something that a controlled and intentional signal shouldn't do thanks to the regulatory bodies. More on that later. The good news here is that even broad interferers like lightning won't interfere with everything, and as long as your sensitive junk isn't too close to uh, strike, the effects will only last as long as the storm. So then, what is it, Linus, that we're all worried about exactly? EMI doesn't sound too bad, and yeah, actually, naturally, it's not. But for every humanity advancing invention from some, like, way heavy dude, there's a countermeasure from some butthole to junk it up. Jammers can block Linus. communications or Linus. even radar Linus, by the taking over, room is excuse on fire me, again. trying to make a video here, can block communications or even radar by talking over all of the intentional signals. And to deliver on the nuclear explosions I promised at the top, I'll uh, pause here while they throw those in real quick. The electromagnetic pulse which accompanies one of these behemoths can actually be as devastating as the blast itself, instantly frying sensitive electronics, crippling the communications and responsibilities of those affected. Some have even theorized that it would only take a couple dozen or so of these things detonated in the atmosphere to essentially wipe out all of the world's power sources, including batteries. Bummer. So that settles it then, right Linus? Nothing is safe and we should go back to living scantily clad in the forest, right? Wrong. Well, mostly wrong anyway. You see, Michael Faraday, certified heavy dude, brought us Faraday cages or shields, devices that protect their contents from electrical disturbances by channeling them around the exterior. Or in other words, they bounce electromagnetic wave activity off them. And while these devices sound kind of complex, really they're just a metal or mesh container, you know, like the ones on the door of your microwave and the ones that we already ship batteries back and forth in now. So you see, as as long as we continue to make sure that we don't overload wireless channels bandwidth like we did during the release of the first iPhone, be sure to place power sources away from high traffic areas and keep potential supervillains in check through the use of sexy British intelligence agents, everything will be just fine. That is unless of course an unpredictable solar flare strikes us without warning. 
Speaking of unpredictable solar flares, actually nothing to do with those at all, but they may make you appear to be brighter as well. The service that I'm talking about is, of course, lynda.com. With a lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching, whether it's like digital photography or video editing, two things that we're pretty passionate here at Linus Media Group about, or whether it's business or even just learning basic office programs like Microsoft Word. You can stream thousands of video courses courses on demand and learn at your own pace on your own schedule whenever it is you have time whether you're trying to you know improve your ability in some hobby that you do or whether you're trying to look for a new job or get a promotion at your current one you can take notes as you go and refer to them later you can download the tutorials and watch them on the go including access on your iOS or Android device and the best thing of course about lynda.com actually the two best things are number one it's affordable it starts at only $25 a month and number two if you head over to lynda.com com slash techwiki, you get 10 days for free, unlimited access to decide if lynda.com is right for you. So thanks for watching, guys. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked, leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated than that, or you have a suggestion for a future fast as possible. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and follow and all that good stuff so that you get more videos from us. More explosions.